Hey everyone, I'm Cypher and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I decided to upgrade one of our most popular projects from the past few months, the RF Clown. The first version was already powerful and pretty compact, but I realized there was still room for improvement. So today, I'll show you exactly what I changed and how the new version takes things to the next level. First of all, just like most of my projects, this one is also completely open source. You can find the full documentation, source code and PCB files on my GitHub. And if you like to support my work and help me creating projects like this, you can join my Patreon. It really means a lot. Comparing the two versions side by side, you can see there is a lot more going on on the new RF Clown. It's not as compact or as small as the first version, but to make it better, some sacrifices had to be made. One of the main reasons for the bigger size is the built-in battery holder, which makes it portable and easier to move around. Of course, when I designed this version, my main goal was to create a more stationary device, but it's still small enough to fit in your bag. For those who just want to put the circuit together without making a PCB, you can easily build it on a breadboard using the same component I used in a modular setup and start exploring the project right away. The first version had just one button to change modes and a few LEDs as indicators. For the new version, I thought why not add a little graphics too. So I added a small OLED display along with these three tactile switches, which lets you navigate through a simple menu, if we can call it that. And instead of using a bunch of LEDs for indicators, I replaced them all with a single NeoPixel, much cleaner and way more versatile. I'd say the most important part of this project, hardware-wise, is the NRF24. In version 1, I used two NRF24 modules with LNA, but for this version, I went with three GT24 mini modules, just like in my NRF Box project. From my experience, when it comes to these kind of applications, having three transceiver can really make a big difference. It's both helpful and more effective. Of course, that also bring up some heating issues, which we'll get into later in this video. Of course, there are plenty of changes in this version, but some parts still remain the same. The Art of Clown's main microcontroller is still the ESP32 WROOM32U, since I also plan to use its Wi-Fi and BLE features for this project. The battery charger is a TP4056, which works perfectly for the single cell battery setup we're using here. To make programming more convenient, I added a CP2102 USB to serial chip, so you can program the ESP32 without any issues. And finally, there is an LF33 voltage regulator, because we need a stable 3.3 volt supply for most of our components. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you're working on a custom hardware project, NextPCB is a solid choice for PCB manufacturing. They offer high quality boards, fast production times, and support for everything from simple prototype to advanced multi-layer designs. Check them out through the link in the description and thanks for the next PCB for supporting the channel. The antenna setup is something that's much more flexible in this new version. This time I use four IPEX extension cables to connect the NRF24 modules and the ESP32 to external antennas. For the antennas themselves, I went with 8 dBi models. Of course, there are other options you could use, but I choose these for a good balance between size and signal gain. Now, one of the issues we are dealing with is the temperature of the NRF24 modules during use. In a normal project, where the NRF24s are used in a standard way, this problem usually doesn't happen. But normal isn't really what we do here. The first solution that came to my mind was to add heatsinks. So after picking the right ones, I installed them. And hopefully, we'll see much better results. Now let's test the new RF Clown. In the last video, I tested in different ways, like interfacing with VLE speakers. You can go watch that one if you haven't already. For this video, I start by testing it with a Wi-Fi based camera setup. As you can see in the feed when I activate the RF Clown, the video freezes, 
and once I deactivate it, everything goes back to normal. What really separates this version from the version 1 is the extended range, thanks to the 3 nrf setup and the improved antennas. Next I tested with my laptop to see what kind of effect it has. When I activate the RF clown, everything goes dark, it can't even scan for nearby access points. And the moment I deactivate the RF clown, it instantly goes back to normal. 